Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for um, gathering us in this place. And we thank you that um, we know that you are with us because your word says that when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us. So, Father, we thank you tonight. And we pray for um, your release of spirit of wisdom and revelation upon each and every one of us in here, that we may grow in the knowledge of you, that as we study Ephesians, Lord, that we would um, increase our knowing of you in a deeper and intimate way. And so, Father, uh, reveal to us things that you want to reveal to us tonight, and we receive any revelation that comes from you, Holy Spirit. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... What I'm going to do first, let's do a little pop quiz. Who loves pop quiz? <laughs> Jeremy does. <laughs> okay, everyone will unmute. And then we'll do a pop quiz. Because we're going to talk about Ephesians 4 and 5 today, right? If we, whatever your take was, just we'll just read them, we'll share them. But for pop quiz... What do you remember from Ephesians 1, 2, and 3? What is it about as far as like those three chapters? <laughs> oh, wasn't it um for spiritual understanding and was that, wasn't it something like that? That's one verse, but <laughs> as far as like the three, uh, it, it was um the three like, chapters. Uh, spiritual like growth, right? That's one part of the book, right? No. <sighs> okay, I'll tell you guys. It, it was it, it was his, <laughs> Paul's prayer, right? No, the, oh, for, for it was it was Paul's letter, right? Oh yeah, there. Ephesians. Yeah. What, what is it about? Um, what What was he wait. talking about? It those th first three chapters. Like, isn't it the first chapter? Like he teaches us how to pray. Was it that one? Uh, for the first chapter, what the not teaching us. I mean, how the, to not pray, the first chapter. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Okay, I'll tell you guys. The is first it our positional truth. Yeah. It's our positional truth. Oh. So basically, everything that he talked about in Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 is the positional truth. It's our position in Christ. So that's why majority of the stuff uh, or the verses in um, Ephesians, he'll say, in Christ, you were raised with Christ in the heavenly places. Or in Christ, you were accepted, you were chosen, you're beloved, you, and so on and so forth. You guys remember that? Okay, so tell me what you learned from Ephesians 1, 2, 3 as far as your positional truth. From Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. Um, Ephesians 1, it talks about the spiritual blessings, right? What are those? What do you remember from those? It also talks about uh, Paul praying for us that God would grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may grow in the knowledge of him. And then we see in Ephesians 2, well, you guys tell me, why am I telling you guys? <laughs> what is your positional truth that you learn from those three chapters? I remember one, which yeah. is the equal standings with the Jews. As yes. Gentiles, yes. equal standing Be with the Jews. That's one I remember. Because when Jesus died on the cross, because cross, his, everybody what, became equal in, he wrecked, under yeah. his kingdom. Yeah, yeah. The wall was separated between the Jews and the Gentiles. Yes. And so now we're what? Yes. We're all God's people. Yep. That's one. Uh, well, the, the main things I can only really remember is for spiritual growth and for spiritual wisdom. The, uh, I think you're talking about the spiritual blessings, which is in Ephesians mm. 1, right? Mm. Do you remember what those seven were? Or... At least any of the seven. No, okay. So we were chosen before the foundations of the world. We were accepted as beloved in Christ Jesus. We were redeemed and forgiven. He He sealed us with the promise of the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. It's a down payment um, before the full redemption. 
uh, he we obtained an inheritance and then we were accepted so that's seven okay anything else in chapter two Can we peek at past notes? Yeah, go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have past notes so I can look. Ver chapter two, verse one. What did it what does that say? The very first five words. Oh, we're made alive with Christ. Yeah. Because once we were dead, now we are alive dead in our trespasses, in our sins. Okay? Keep going. Are we still on chapter two. Ephesians 2 or Ephesians 3? Chapter 2. Uh, go to verse 5. Three things. Okay. Three things in verse 5. The, uh, for, uh, the first one it's basically talking about the verse one also, which is made us alive together with Christ. What's the next one? Verse six. You can unmute also, Jeremy. <laughs> we are seated with him, in the heavenly realms. Before you were seated, what did we? What did he do? Oh, he raised us from the dead. Yeah, raised us up and then made us sit with him in the heavenly places. So remember, like. When I say like, we can see down on earth because we're sitting with him in the heavenly places because that's our position in Christ, right? Um, and then verse 10. We are God's creation. Yep. Uh-huh. Keep going. And we were prepared beforehand that we should walk with him. Yeah. Keep going. Just 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 spot it and just say it. We might not get to it like comprehensively, but at least we see some of it and then you guys can just go back to it. As we submit ourselves to God, he continually perfects the work he began in us. Mm-hmm. Which verse is that? A verse 10, I think. Hmm. What version? Oh, that's like the insight. Like, because because he created us. He We hmm. are his workmanship, right? And so he created us. Hmm. And so uh, he, he created us. He, and, and actually, that's also a scripture in Romans. I think it's in Romans. He who began a good work in me, he will also complete it. That's actually a, a note under the notes. All right. Uh, so just go back to it. But I want us to, I want us to kind of look at the fir the first three. So look at that again um, this weekend when you can, because the next four chapters is talking about how we should live. If you know your your position in Christ then you should live this way is what Paul is saying in chapters four, five, six. And you guys just turned in your homework for chapters four, five, four and five, right? And so you guys are, you gave your insights and you guys are talking about like how uh, Paul is saying you should live this way, walk in unity, walk in love, walk in, you know, um, in the spirit and all that stuff. And so before you can do the walking, you first need to know your identity in Christ, your positional truth in Christ. Because if you don't know that you are seated in the heavenly places with him, you're just going to think that you, you belong to this world instead of like your mindset as being seated in the heavenly places with him. Does that make sense? If you don't know that you were chosen before the foundations of the world, you would think, oh, you know, God, well, we know that we say that we God loves us because he died for our sins, right? But he chose us. In John, he says, I chose you. Uh, before, before we chose him, he chose us. 
right? He said that. And so knowing all these positional truth will is a foundation basically of walking the life that Paul is going to talk about it, that talks about in chapter four and five, right? Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay. So go back to first three, those first three chapters. So you can see um, who we are in Christ, right? That even before we were sinners, he died for our sins that so that we would be alive with him in him. Amen. All right, so let's go to chapter four and five. Like I said, um, here it's talking about, uh, Paul is talking about how we should live, how we should walk on this earth, like how we should act, like to our family, to our friends and all that stuff. And to, obviously to, our, to the body of Christ, how then shall we live? And so let's, you guys can, if you guys did not read the 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 two chapters and if you guys have your notes then you can just read your notes let's start with chapter four what 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 is your take on chapter four what what did you learn from chapter four and then obviously because you learned that you'll apply it in your lives right because this is what paul is saying this is how we should live anyone can go first sister Mel, you want to go first you're on mute though. Yeah, your chapter um, four. Chapter four. Um, it tells us in that verse of uh, four one that um, it's a the, the the call of Jesus for us is that we have to walk worthy of His calling, and um, that and it says in six nine also that the maturing process of the believer equipping us into appeal appeal us. Appeal each, uh, help us each forward. So, um, the the what do you call this? The message in here is that we have to walk in unity. That's why uh, Paul says that I beseech you that you are a walk worthy of your calling. That's and and then uh, Paul calls us for unity and uh, to keep that and the spirit uh, help us. Um, to come to unity in faith, mm -hmm. and that the and the Holy Spirit reveals us, um, revealing to us how we walk uh, in the calling of God. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what our what your calling is? Oh, based on the notes that we had, what is what is a calling? So there like, are two. Uh, oh, yeah, go. No, it's no, like go, go. The your purpose of your life here on earth. Uh huh. Can you elaborate more? Uh. <laughs> so there's two things that I I said. There's internal and external. Mm -hmm. What's the internal? So the internal is uh. uh having an intimate relationship with God and living the eight beatitudes. So if you go to Matthew 5, you'll see there what the eight beatitudes are. But that's not the comprehensive of the internal calling, but that's the two that I can give an example of. of. And then external is like what you do, like your ministries, your, what you do at work and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that you see, that you do. Mm -hmm. And the internal is like all like you, how you live and uh, your relationship with God. So walking worthy of that calling. This is how, this is the first, first one that, 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 that Paul said and how we should live. And it says walk, like walk, like literally, like, I mean, we say this, right? We walk with God and he's saying like walk then worthy of, of mm -hmm. his calling, which you were called. Yeah, amen. because we, amen, because we have to, that's why we have, as Christian, we have to pray that God would, uh, uh, God prepared us uh, to be, 
uh, made spiritually mature. That's why it says that we have to walk in the knowledge of him or in the fullness of our destiny to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the calling is actually a revelatory, meaning like you receive it as a revelation. That's why Paul actually prayed that in Ephesians 1. He said that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, may be illumined, that you may know the hope of your calling in Christ Jesus. So, you know, every night you can pray that. I mean, it's one of the prayers that we have in the apostolic prayers, actually. Ephesians 1, 17 to 20, I think. Right. Okay. Who else can uh, share what they got on Ephesians 4? How then know. shall we live? Yeah. Uh, so, Ephesians 4, uh, Paul tells us in parts of this chapter to walk in unity. <laughs> And he tells us to walk as one person and to walk worthy of our calling. Jesus prayed that we may walk in unity as believers and as a church. Specifically, Jesus wanted us to walk in unity as one whole church and one body, just as the Father, Spirit, and Son are. Mm -hmm. Paul also describes us to be one church as there is one God, one way, one baptism, and one Christ. Paul tells us, that unity is the responsibility of all people in the church and must be pursued as Jesus prayed it to be. Though there are roles in the church, the church is to be one with many individuals inside it, and those individuals are to do their part in the body. And each part is crucial to the unity of the body, helping it edify itself into the image of God causing growth. In, other, in the other part of Ephesians 4, uh, the Gentiles and Jews are not separated any longer. He tells us that we are joined as one and that we may walk in unity as one church containing Gentile and Jew. Paul tells us that Gentiles did not hear of Christ because if they did, they would walk it in their life or um, apply it in their life, meaning they wouldn't be so hard-hearted if they heard Christ. And due to the fact that the Gentiles were so hard-hearted, Paul tells us to strip ourselves of our former sinful nature and put on white clothing that Jesus provided for us on the cross. Paul tells us to renew ourselves not one time, but constantly mm -hmm. uh, repenting ourselves of sin and unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. Who wants to go next? Gio? Mm -hmm. This, uh, this the, the way the chapter ends, where it says, uh, get rid of all bitterness, rage, yeah. anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving yeah. one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Um, this is just kind of like something that like I heard kind of like a long time ago, and it's just something that I've really tried to apply in my life. So it's like, I, re I really try to like rarely get angry, Mm -hmm. like legitimately and <laughs> I, 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 I guess like, I there's times like I'm annoyed and stuff like that but it's okay. like there's rarely a time where I'm like fully like mad at like somebody and even like when it I am I always try to make it not like obvious and I try not to act on it so like even when I'm mad I still try to like think it through and like, just be like, okay, I'm mad. I shouldn't, like, I know I'm mad, but I'm like, I shouldn't like, I shouldn't lash out. I shouldn't like act <laughs> impulsively. <laughs> okay. And, um, but it, it's just like something that like, I always do like try to uh, keep in mind, especially like with my, my loved ones, especially with my girlfriend. <laughs> there, <laughs> there's times with, uh, well, 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 when we get into arguments and, um, uh, I ch uh, I really just try to like um, really not uh, act out on it because like I know like I like um, if I'm to like show her like the ways of God, then of course I need to show it through like, my life. So yeah, I can't like say all these things and then just like go off on her. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I always like I always make sure to like um, like I act like let her know I'm mad, but not like <laughs> yeah <Well>, like that <laughs> so it says here that be angry and do not sin yeah 
Do you know what that means? So, but do you, I mean, I, I don't think it means though that you, you have the right to be angry because I don't know the reason why you're, you're getting angry at your, your girlfriend. Mm. Is it reasonable to be angry at her? But I was thinking um, there's two kinds of anger, selfish anger and righteous anger. Selfish anger is just because a good example would be like when you're driving, someone cuts you off and you're like, ah, yeah. uh, that's selfish anger. But righteous anger is uh, you're angry, you hate or you're angry at someone who's doing unrighteous things. So, for example, Jesus got mad at the people who were selling and gambling at the temple. That was righteous anger. So many people would like compare that like, oh, I can be angry because Jesus got mad at those people. But see, the, the anger that he had was righteous anger is because when you're angry at those things is because you hate what they're doing. You're hating. Mm. It's sin that they're doing. But if someone just cut you off, they're not really sinning at you. So you can't be angry at them. You know what I mean? And so it depends on like what your girlfriend did. Okay, so, let me give a better example. That, um, there's like, um, cause so you know how like my, my girlfriend's Catholic. Yeah. Right. And even then, um, she still isn't like the most connected with God either. Mm. Um, even she's kind of just like casual. Yeah. They, yeah. And there's, we do have some conflicting ideas on that. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, there are times where like she'd say some things where I'd really just find like, what? I'm just like, what? And then, uh, and like, of, co of course I can't just be like, no, that's wrong. Or just like, cause then like, she's, she's not gonna want to talk to me about these things anymore. So like, I really just like try to like, like it says, like really, uh, be patient <laughs> with it. Yeah. And like, I try to like, um, Uh, so you're not necessarily angry at her. You're just disagreeing with what she's saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Because yeah. <laughs> then if you're angry with her, you're not going to talk to her. You're going to, I don't know what you do when you're angry, mm. but you're just disagreeing with what she's saying. Mm. But that also depends if you're holding bitterness because it's saying here, do not be bitter right i don't know i'm just asking mm. <laughs> some random <laughs> questions because maybe you're just defining it as anger but it's not really anger you're mm. just you're just disagreeing with her and so and so also it probably just annoys you because it's what she believes is not aligned to what you believe and so i guess part of it too is you really praying to God and asking God to tenderize her heart so that when you, when she says those things to give you also the, the utterance to share to her instead of like just keeping it to yourself and saying, I'm not going to talk to you for now because I just dis disagreed with what you said or, or, or saying like, no, you're wrong. You know, like at least, you know, God will give you the, the utterance to tell her yeah. not necessarily like, argue with her or or debate with her but how do i talk to her so that she could have a revelation of what the truth is right so that really just praying and asking god on how to go about it but yeah but that but that's still good but i don't think you're unless you have anger management i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i swear i don't get mad often <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so okay that's good but see at least we see here right like this is how we should 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 be yeah. living yeah how about you kim um so i'll talk about something that no one i don't think anyone talked about it yet yeah um i was uh one thing here in my nose is uh that we must walk in the unity with the holy spirit yeah. and not cause it grief yeah like um we should like we should walk hand in hand with the holy spirit but don't like because 
this really caught my my attention because there would be times that especially before the Tuesday mm. um there would be a lot of times where I'll be like compromising mm-hmm. in my walk with God mm-hmm. so I remember when I read this verse I felt like really bad because mm-hmm. it's like oh all this time I've been causing grief to the Holy Spirit because yep. I've been sitting here and there and that's not walking in unity so it's like um and that was also the day before the the Tuesday so on Tuesday I was like that whole day I was like had this feeling in my heart as like even without pastor saying it so actually when pastor yeah when pastor started uh, confronting us about it Tuesday yeah. I felt so bad and then it was like oh that's what I was feeling all that time during the day it was because I was causing grief to the Holy Spirit all mm-hmm. this time so that's why it was like we really must uh, guard ourselves and walk yeah. in unity with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. so so that we may grow more with God yep I mean H- Holy Spirit is uh, our, what I call my teacher, my leader, my helper. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah, he reminds me things. When I forget something, he reminds me things. So it's like every time we sin, it's like we were betrayed the Holy Spirit. Every time you sin, you're not following what the Holy Spirit is saying. You're following your flesh. And you're coming against God. That's what it is, basically. We were just studying Romans 8 and Galatians 5 in Discipleship 2. It's about walking in the Spirit and pretty much like what you just said. It's it's kind of like that. But in uh, those two chapters, it um, explains, it describes how to walk in the Spirit. And when you walk in the flesh, this is what you also do. So you can go there if you want additional insight on on that walking in unity with the holy spirit okay yeah okay anyone uh, else yeah i just want to i just want to clarify something when, so when it says like unity in the body that means unity in the church where is that it's just like uh, that's just like the beginning there is one body yeah so that that means the church or is like everybody or church. is it like, like i know like okay. you're talking about verse four um yeah or just like that's just like the title because like there's i have titles for like oh my, my chapters what i uh, think it's in it, verse one geo is it verse one i'm just saying like in general like when it says like unity like in the body for like this context for like this chapter like as a whole it's a body of christ okay. the church so the church okay. yeah because so um the unity here that's why uh, i have a note on our notes section uh in uh chapter four that unity is a responsibility of every believer so it's the okay. body of christ yeah what translation are you nlt oh you have that title okay yeah yeah and I'm- just like the the beginning title of uh of Ephes- ephesians 4 is unity in the body yeah the body of Christ, okay. which is the bride of Christ, which is the church, mm-hmm. which is us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why when we speak of like unity, um, like I can't be united with you, but if you're not cooperating with me, there's really no point. Okay. There's th- that's why it's one one like every believer has that responsibility, not just me. Yeah. yeah. Because we are, we are the church. Like, uh, church is just a building, but but we, when we come together in one body, that's when unity comes. Okay. You know, we come together. Well, not just mm-hmm. physically, but also in, uh-huh. in the spirit. Yeah, I like just, what? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure because I was thinking if it was like accountability within the church or with accountability with others around, us, like in general. Church. Okay. But see, okay, the body of Christ is not because just only FFC 
Yeah. We're also talking about yeah. every believer. Yeah. 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 I, I was, uh, I wanted to make sure there's like, like the believer. Cause I wasn't sure if I was like, I know, like, I'm pretty sure like we usually, when we say the body, like, you know, we, like, we need the church, but I was like, but we do also want as many people, like people to be in the church. Like, so like, is that, mm-hmm. do I include that's, them or like, that's like a different thing. Well, that's why we evangelize to them. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like, like in this context, church. like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I just want yeah. to make sure. That. Yep. Any anyone else wants to add in Ephesians four? Ver- look at verses seventeen through twenty four. Oh, Amil already talked about that. That you are a new creation. Mm-hmm. I mean, a new man, but I'm kind of referring to what Paul said also in Corinthians that uh, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Therefore, oh. therefore, the old is gone and the new has come. All right. Anyone else wants to add there? No? Okay, let's go to... Chapter 5 then. Walking in love, walking in light, walking in wisdom. You see verse 1, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. When you imitate God, it means you're copying God. In a TPT translation, it says, I think it says, we represent the Father God as his children. And so when you're walking in this earth, when you are relating to people, it should reflect that you are copying the character of God. I mean, that, to me, that's what it says mm-hmm. in, in that verse, verse one. What does your translation say? NLT, uh, Geo. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Yeah. What translation are you, uh, Kim? Uh, I have several, because it's like an app on my phone. Yeah. But what if do you like? I'm talking to... about if it's my Bible, it's also NLT. Oh, okay. What do you like to read? What translation? Uh, I usually like NLT too because it's like easier for me to understand. Yeah. And then I just sometimes go to TPT. Yeah. But imitators, right? I mean, the same as your translation. That means you copy God as his children. What's your sister, uh, Imelds? The same thing, uh, NLB. Yeah. Yeah. That we are imitators of God. That we have to imitate him. Yeah. I mean, just that alone, if -hmm. if you forgot everything that we talked about today, but... Just that one verse you remember when you leave this class. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have a lot of questions. Okay, how do I imitate God? How, how do I act like God? Then you're, you're, you're going to have to start researching. How does God act, right? So that you can imitate him, right? Yes. Do, I mean, do we even, do, did we ever think, think about that? But here, who, who wants to go? Chapter 5. Well, your question was, how can we imitate God? We cannot imitate God without knowing Him first, without reading the Word of God, without, uh, without, um, with no relationship with God. Yeah. The only way that we can imitate God is to really <clears throat> knowing Him and then uh, loving Him. But we cannot love Him either. We cannot love Jesus either if we don't know the Word of God. So yeah. that's the main so the first main thing is just with that we have to have that relationship with God. And yeah. when we have that relationship with God, um, we demonstrate his love um, to others. And then, um, then we walk in love. And then the, the, the people who see who is, yeah. in, who is uh, I mean, the people who see who is in us, which is Jesus, it's like what it says that we will be a fragrant aroma yeah. to, uh, to, to God, like a fragrant aroma. So let our lives be pleasing to God for God 
Jesus gave himself for us as a living sacrifice. That's what it says in Romans. Yeah. Amen. Who wants to go next? Chapter 5. I can go. Yeah. Uh, so in Ephesians 5, Paul tells us to walk in the light, love, and in wisdom or Holy Spirit. Um, to walk in the light means to imitate God in all of his pureness and righteousness. Paul wants us to be imitators of Christ mm -hmm. rather than imitators of the world. Mm -hmm. And Paul doesn't just mention walking in the light, but as children of the light, mm -hmm. meaning to be imitators of the Father and to be like our Father in his goodness and righteousness. Uh, the reason we must imitate to the Father is due to the fact that we have no fellowship with the devil, so we are not to imitate the ways of the wicked or even partake in them. Uh, to walk in love is the act of imitating Jesus in his love for us. He died on the cross, and we need to reflect that love towards one another. Paul says that our lives should be a sweet aroma toward the Lord, meaning we should be pure. Paul tells us how to be pure, first by telling us not to let people deceive us with empty words, meaning to not let them use empty words to excuse our sins. Paul also tells us not to be partakers with them, for we have no fellowship with the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, to walk in wisdom, Paul tells us that we should walk as wise or children of God, mm -hmm. not as fools or evil people. Paul tells us this for the days are evil, meaning time is limited or short. Mm -hmm. Paul mentions that the result of being filled with the Spirit of God is being wise like God, which includes discerning and hearing God for what he says is right. We are also not to feel this outpouring of the Spirit once, but many times. Mm hmm Yep. Kim, you want to go next? Uh, I can. Um, one thing, I I also mentioned all the things that um, Amil yeah. said with the walking in the in love and wisdom and in the light. Another thing I want to say is probably related to Gio's question earlier with the unity. Mm -hmm. Because that's how like our relationship with God is. It's like a marriage. Like the yeah. church, like you said earlier, the church is the bride. And God is the um, husband, is the bridegroom. And then yeah. how our relationship with God is like also part of the after marriage where we must respect our husbands and in return, we will also get respected and love. Yeah. And I remember yeah. I mentioned in your notes also is like if the husband, uh, wait, what was that specific phrase? It was like um, if the husband loves the wife as much yeah. as he would love himself yeah like that yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's like that's how much you should love each other as much as you love yourself so yeah god is already loving us, us so much so we should give back to him that same love that he showed us yeah A and uh you said uh which one did you say again? Something about the hus the husband loving his wife and the wife ha loving the husband back uh, in return about yeah. the same. And that's actually the second commandment because you can't love other people unless you love yourself. <clears throat> yes. Right? And, but see, before the second commandment, you have to do the first and greatest commandment. Which is love God. Yeah, because you can't say that you love someone another person but you you don't love god i mean i think that's like a reverse because he told us first to do the first and greatest because see it's easy to love those that are lovable yeah. but how about those that are not lovable that's why the second commandment does that make sense yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, right like okay it's easy to love especially uh, let's just say for instance in our family like our mom especially if they're so sweet and they're so kind and they cook you all, a lot of food and all that stuff but what if they're not kind what if they're not sweet what if they're not that person right are you still gonna love them in the same way you would love them if they were sweet kind and uh lovable 
it's probably hard, right? Even if yes. they, they are your parents. Right? Have, but see, I had a classmate like that. Yeah. That I had such a hard time <laughs> liking <laughs> in high school. I remember her so well. <laughs> but then my mom too. would always tell me what you said. Yeah. Like, love, love, you love others as you love yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. And see, you can only love those unlovable if you have done the first and greatest commandment because. When you love God, you will obey everything that he says. And the next thing he says is to love others the way you love yourself. And so what would you do? Just love them even if they're unlovable. But yeah, I just wanted to relate that to Matthew 22, 37, 40. <laughs> How about you, Gio? Um. It's one that like stabs me is uh verse 10 11 yeah. carefully determine what pleases the lord take yeah. part in no worthless deeds of evil and darkness instead expose them yeah and i guess like this is like something i can relate to like um our past a couple days like yeah. our like, devotions where it's just like uh really like discerning what yep. truly um who is on the lord's heart what really um is for him and what he wants us to do and to uh, just not fall victim to being deceived on like what others or what the world may like tell us. Yep. Yep. And in the same way for you, like you can expose the works of the darkness because the light is in you. You you walk in the light. What did what was the other thing that Emil said? Not only that you walk in the light, but you are the light. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you walk in the light, because you are the light, darkness is broken. And in this case, the scripture says, expose, exposing what is in the darkness. Amen. Who else wants to add? Jeremy, you want to say something? <laughs> um, yeah. I How about verse 15? 15. <laughs> Um, we did this before, remember? Yeah. <laughs> no, but share what you were gonna share. Okay. Um. Well, kind of generally on all walk in love, walk in light, walk in wisdom. Uh, for me, I kind of translate that to <clears throat> the previous um, Ephesians four of yeah. becoming a new man, and like yeah. how Atamara was sharing about discipleship too. We were studying Romans eight and Galatians five and. Uh, the spirit, soul, and body, and to really walk in these three things, walk in the love, walk in light, walk in wisdom, is to walk, or is like going to verse one, is to be an imitator of God. Um, when we are made new, when we are a new creation in Christ, um, our old self is gone. Our old self is completely no more. We we got, we have gotten rid of it. And like this is our new self. What Paul is like teaching us, what Paul is like ministering to us is what we are to become. Um, to in all things we do, in all things we say, we are to like speak love, speak um, light, speak how God was to speak. And in Galatians eight and uh, or, no, Galatians five and Romans eight, it is kind of saying that same exact thing, like as. Um, I think what Gio was trying to share was sharing earlier about um, when you were talking about, I guess, anger and stuff like that. Like in all, in whatever we are doing, whatever we're saying, um, if we're not showing who God is, or if we're not yeah. showing what how He loves us, if we're not like, sharing that to um, just anyone, even if they're like unkind, if they're unlovable in our eyes. Um, we have to see them how God sees them. He yeah. sees them as his children, as his sons and daughters. And he doesn't look at their actions. He doesn't look at what they're doing or what they're saying. Um, in the same way with us, he loves us because we are his creations. We are his own. Yep. Amen. Okay. Anyone, any last words? So just go back to the first three chapters because it's very... Um, 
eye opener when you actually know who you are in Christ. Like for me, like always for me, Ephesians one is very it speaks to me loudly. I it's because that's my positional truth in Christ, and it's actually every it says there in Ephesians one three every spiritual blessings has been lavished mm-hmm. upon you, every spiritual blessings, and so. When you know that, you don't want to wish for the earthly blessings. Because what is richer? Isn't it the spiritual, the every spiritual blessings that has been already given to you or the earthly blessings that we just see and it's just temporary? It's the spiritual. I mean, I of course, for me, it's, I'm going to say the spiritual blessings. But once you have a... Uh, a grip of that like a revelation of that like you'll never want to pursue like material things and I'm not saying that it's bad you know like yeah you have to make money to uh, you know um, pay off your rent and all that stuff but the scripture also says that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory so yeah, I, I want you guys to go back to the first three chapters, just you know, at your own uh, pace, and just really dive into it and and get a revelation of of our positional truth in Christ, because it's it's very um, key to walking here on earth. Because if you don't know who you are in Christ, you it's hard, not hard, but like you won't know how to act here on earth Mm -hmm. right because that's what it's saying four five six that this is how you should live knowing that these are you know who you are in christ then you should live this way on earth not like the people here on the world amen so just go back to it i really encourage you to go back to it and you can go back to the notes Uh, i sent it's already in the rd1 room back in december so just (laughs) read it yeah amen uh uh-uh. I read it. I read it. I read it too. <laughs> Even if that's my notes, I go back to it and read it. I'm not kidding you. I read it because it, it comes, I don't know, like you may forget it, like, oh, what does this mean? But you know, as you keep on reading it and meditating on it, it just it gets imprinted in your heart. It gets imprinted in your heart. And so just do that. Yeah, when you have um Yeah. I- Sister Myra, I think all from the Ephesians chapter, um, like three, four, five. Yeah, it wraps up all um, from the chapter one, yeah. um, uh, one verse, I believe, up to thirteen, yeah, or fourteen, yeah, uh, which is about truly the spiritual, spiritual blessings, blessings, and uh, it sums up on everything that uh, we are adopted by Christ, you know, and we are redeemed, we are forgiven. Um, what else? Um, we were sealed every, uh, of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's a sealed promise. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I think it's wrapped up how we walk or how then we shall live in this um, in these last days that yeah. uh, we have to walk worthy of His calling is like we have to walk in the light. Um yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just wanted to kind of add this on the Ephesians 1. You know how it says, uh, you were sealed of the Holy Spirit, right? As a redemp- uh, as a guarantee. And then it mm-hmm. goes here in Ephesians 4, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed. So because you were already sealed with the Holy Spirit. And if you mm-hmm. do earthly things, if you do things in your flesh ways, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. And you remember in Revelation, I don't know, I think it's in Revelation 11, it talks about there, uh, those who were sealed with, I forgot, where is it? Mm. I think it's 11. But it's talking about... Uh, you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Lito, you have been... Um, you have my name. I think it says you have my name. Something like that. Yeah. I gave you. I know. I give you my name, which is the seal. Which yeah, is right the seal here. of God. Yes. Yeah. Where is it? So I. I think chapter seven. 
I'll find it. I'll send it to you guys. <laughs> I know, me too. But do you know you uh, you know which one I'm talking about, sister? Yes. But here on, on the revelation, it's talking about when uh, you know the seal was open when the trumpet was was uh, blown. You know how there was a lot of like things going on in the natural here on earth, right? But those who were mm-hmm. sealed with the Holy Spirit were not um, affected. And so mm-hmm. that's what I was trying to say. Amen. Amen. Okay. I think we're good. Unless Pastor Linda wants to say something. No. <laughs> I was just checking if you guys are done. Oh, we're actually closing now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so one so more thing, Sister oh, Mara. So yung so binanggit ni, ano, ni, sis, ni Kim. Sister yeah. Kim. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know if I'm, um, if she's talking about uh, the, like the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, just one example, uh, Kim. Mm. Um, I've said that, I think I've said it before, that you will know when you grieve the Holy Spirit because you're not happy, you are like guilty or something. Because for me, like uh, my example was when I was woke up like in the morning and then it just like I heard this like four o'clock in the morning and I heard this voice and it says you pray and you pray and then all of the sudden I didn't pay attention of that I went back to sleep and then when I woke up in the morning then I remember what I have done and I feel so bad and I repented to God so that's I think um, that's when we grieve the Holy Spirit that it's in our disobedience yeah right Pastora (laughs) yeah and when you continue to ignore what the Spirit of God is there saying, go. then th- it will start to make you deaf. You can't hear them anymore. Uh, time is going to come that he won't speak to you anymore wh- or you won't hear him even when he's speaking because you have hardened your heart. You have put a lot of grief in, grief in there. Yeah. What chapter, Pastor, in Revelation where it talks about uh, those people that were sealed of the Holy Spirit, uh, and they check, were not... Check Revelation 7. Oh, okay. So the Revelation 7, guys, go there. Because we're talking about Ephesians 1, that we were sealed of the Holy Spirit as a promise, and then when you grieve the Holy Spirit, uh, who is the seal on the day of redemption? And so, and then I was referring to them, the Revelation, the one uh, in Revelation, where, where the ones who were sealed were not affected. So... Revelation 7, guys. I think Revelation 7, and there are two places there in Revelation where that they, God mentioned, uh, you know, <coughs> Jesus mentioned that to, um, to, to John. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sister Melody, you want to close us? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, O Lord God, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for all the insights, all our God, that was given. And we pray, Father, that as we continue, all our God, to study Ephesians, Lord God, we pray, Father, that continue to open the eyes of our understanding, all our God, so that we may understand what is our calling, all our God, and what is the spiritual blessing, all our God, that you have given to us, all Lord. And we pray, Father God, hallelujah, that we will walk worthy, O Lord God, of your calling and walk in unity, O Lord God. Yes. And we will be, Lord God, hallelujah, uh, uh, the light of this world, O Lord God. And as we walk, O Lord Jesus, we pray, Father, that we will contaminate, O Lord God, uh, the people around us, Father God. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that this discipleship uh, uh, one, O Lord God, hallelujah, that we may grow in the knowledge of you, O Lord God. Lord, we pray, Father, that our relationship, O Lord God, will grow deeper and dig deeper, O Lord God. And as we meditate your word, O Lord God, hallelujah, day and night, you will reveal to us, Father God, the things, O Lord, that you called us, O Lord, to, O Father. And Lord Jesus, we pray that each and every one of us, Lord, for 
uh, uh, this discipleship one, O oh Lord, and also, Father, for discipleship to Lord Jesus, that we will continue, Father God, to seek your face, O oh Lord God, because you have said, Father, that as we seek your face, all things shall be added unto us, O oh Lord God, and Lord Jesus, that we will be um, a prepared bride, O oh Lord, in this coming age, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Myra, O oh Lord God, um, helping us, teaching us, O oh Lord God, for um, the few weeks already, O oh Lord, and our pastor, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless Amen. each and every one of us, Lord.